Greetings, everyone. We welcome you to part two, part two of We Declare Victory, the good fight against HIV. We are at part two, right, Brother Justin? And I'm going to open us up in a quick word of prayer, and we're going to go forth. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, here we are again, standing in need of you. Now, Father God, be with us. Be with us during this part two of this series. Be with us, oh God, fill our mouths. Allow us to say something to educate and inform and encourage your people. And we say thank you always in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen. So part one, we dealt with the love factor. We dealt with the love factor. We dealt with the fact that you are not a mistake. What you did is not who you are. You are not shame. We dealt with what is HIV? We dealt with some facts associated with it, and we dealt with some myths that go along with it as well. And so now, as we start this part two series, we wanna, we wanna, we wanna talk about how, how you treat someone that may be dealing with this situation, may be dealing with this issue. Yes, we understand that you are not your issue, but at the, at the end of the day, to be realist to, to, to deal with reality you may still have this thing and how do we treat somebody that may have hiv how do so treat people in love it's, since 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 love is the foundations so we're going to deal with this in two folds we're, we're going to deal with the treatment of it like the medicine side and things like that and then we're going to deal with the biblical side as well when it comes to the biblical understanding of how we should treat people that have anything, let, let alone just HIV. Absolutely. So from there, I want, I want to kind of, I want to go ahead and start right um, at the treatment, uh, treatment spot because we dealt with in the last video the importance of getting early detection. Yes, sir. We dealt with knowing... Um, First of all, how you can even get or uh, transmit HIV. But I want to go here first. It says 87% of annual new infections are transmitted by those not receiving HIV care and treatment. Starting right there, we're dealing with, first of all, you got to know. Awareness. You got to be aware that you even have this thing or someone around you. You got to be aware that it, that that this is a reality for you. Yes. Um, even if there's a partner that you have that has HIV, being aware is, is critical. So, so the word that I hear that literally just popped in my mind when, when you were talking that, honesty. Honesty. Honesty with yourself and God. Honesty with your partner. There's a there's a safety and honesty, but there's also a vulnerability that goes alongside it as well. You have to be honest, and this stat is alarming because 87% is a lot. In school, that's a B. <laughs> that's, a, that's a passing grade in school. Almost a B plus, depending on where you, where you go to school. And 87, so you're trying to tell me that 87% of the annual new infections are transmitted by those not receiving care. And I believe a lot of that is them not knowing that they have it. Yes. So we established a statistic on the, on the last video that 165,000 people, uh, Americans, do not know they have this thing. And I can 100% agree that, that that number probably directly goes into that 87% of the new infections because if you don't know you have it you don't know that you don't know you're passing it around and so and that's one of the dangers and so um, you're passing around this infection not receiving the HIV care and the treatment but then it goes on to says but individuals with HIV who take their medication as prescribed because you don't get to pick and choose when you take it yes sir you take it as you're prescribed and you stay virally suppressed you not only can you live long and healthy lives? But you also have effectively no risk of transmitting the sexual, uh, uh, of transmitting HIV sexually to your partner. Myth alert, myth alert, myth alert. So we just literally, with statistics and facts, 
killed the notion that HIV is a death sentence. And it's we not. killed, because let's, let's answer the question in the people's mind. Yes, you can still have sex. <sighs> Prayerfully, you're doing it. Within marriage. marriage. <laughs> yes, sir. But you can still you can still have you can still have sex and you can live long, healthy lives. But this is only for the, those who are taking their medicine as prescribed. And as this says, you're staying virally suppressed. You're staying virally suppressed. You only do that by taking care of yourself and by taking the medicines that the professionals are telling you to take. So we're dealing with treatment, not just on this side of it, but now we deal with it. How do we treat people as a body, as a body of Christ, as faith-based. How do we treat people? So I want to deal with this with two sets of scriptures. So we're going to go with the first one. First one is love. I, obviously, we're, we're talking about the love factor, love treatment. How do we treat people? Mark 12, verse 30 and 31 reads it like this. And thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart. And with all thy strength, this is the first commandment, verse 31. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Um, I'm, I'm looking at this love thy neighbor, and he doesn't make any distinctions on who your neighbor is. Can, can we just talk about that in itself right there? Because sometimes religious folk like to choose who they love and who they don't based off of whatever. And here's the thing. The only distinction there is the neighbor is not yourself. That's the only distinction, which means if this person on the left of me has HIV, this one has cancer, this one has nothing, I got to love them all the same. Your neighbor is whoever is outside of you. Yes. Whoever's not yourself. And you're right. There is no distinction in the scripture that tells us who we can and cannot love. Mm -hmm. He says, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. And so when you start dealing with treatment, what does that love look like? I believe we go back to our original scripture. And we, we go back here and it says it like this. What is the first fruit? Love. The way that looks like, I'm not throwing your mess in your face. The last thing people need is to be reminded of their mistake. The last thing I want, and, and maybe it's just me, I don't want somebody throwing in my face what I'm already ashamed about. And, 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 it, and it's, 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 it's not a good look. It's very judgmental. It's, look, it's, it's looking at the beam in somebody else's eye, not looking at yours. In the Bible that I read, you, you, can, you can rebuke me if I'm wrong. It says, he who gives mercy shall obtain mercy. And before I allow God not to give me mercy, I'm going to give mercy out. So in other words, what you're saying is, um, and as we covered before, but I just want to re reiterate it, you're not identifying them with something that they have. All souls belong unto God. And with that understanding, here's, here's a crazy fact. And when you do your research on religions, Judaism and Christianity is the only religion that literally requires you to look at man through the eyes of God. I'm supposed to look at you. Why? Because you're made in the image of God. And if you're made in the image of God, Justin, I cannot look at you in eyes of judgment. That's not my that's not that's not my realm. What I'm supposed to do is what? The first commandment, love God. And the second one, love thy neighbor. Absolutely. So so what we're establishing here is as a body of Christ, the best antidote, the best way to treat a person who's dealing with HIV is to treat them with love. Realize that they are people. They yes. are no different than someone who, say, has lupus, who has cancer. Let's even go on a smaller scale. Who's got a cold? Who's got COVID? Just because they have this thing doesn't mean that that's who they are. It's a condition. It's a condition. Yes. It's not a death sentence. Yes, sir. It's not, it's not a, uh, if you look at me, you touch me, you, you, I'm going to get it. No, 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 no. It's none of that. 
they are still people. And my scripture that yes. I like to pull from yes, sir. is that all have fallen. Yes, sir. All of us have sinned. Romans 3, 23. And come short of the glory of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so for me to treat somebody bad because of an of issue that they have is to be hypocritical. Here's a scripture I want to I wanna bounce off of you for your insight on this. Matthew 7, verse 12 in the message version. Ooh, he said, here's a simple rule of thumb guide for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you. Then grab the initiative and do it for them. Add up God's law and prophets, and this is what you get. So our golden rule, treat, treat others the way you want them to treat you. And that is a form of empathy. That is me seeing you in a thing and realizing it could have been me and I could be right there as well. And what, and what the Eugene Peterson, <laughs> the message Bible, he's saying, here's the rule of thumb. See how somebody else will want to be treated in that situation and do that. How, how would you want to be treated if that was you? If I can only imagine if I had HIV, how I would want to be treated. Would I want to be isolated? As if I have this leprosy, if you touch it, and then, then uh, what, what, what I want people whispering about me in the pews about what I've done, what, what I want somebody to call me out in front of the church, uh-oh, and make me explain to everybody, what, well, what I want to be treated in this thing. I would want to be treated with love. I would want someone to minister to me. I would want somebody to tell me, hey, James, you're not this. I know you may have did it and you may have failed, but he who are spiritual, let them restore. I believe the job of the church is to restore. That, and not only that, you spoke, you spoke in the other video about the whole judgment thing. And as we established before, one of the reasons, let's just deal with it on the practical side. You don't know what happened to them. We assume. We assume it's a sexual thing. Yes. We don't understand that. Some people, it was passed down to them. Yes. They got it other ways, other, 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 by other means. Some people have addictions, and they deal with it from even a drug standpoint. Yes. This is why we ought to treat people. This is what the scripture says. Jesus was moved by compassion. Yes. That C word, compassion. It's compassion, which all falls under the guidelines of love. I'm not compassionate because I feel, oh, my God, I feel so sorry for you, and this is going to kill you. No, I'm compassionate because you are still God's chosen. Yes. I'm compassionate because I don't want to see you going through this. I'm compassionate even, let's say, you yourself had it. I'm compassionate upon myself. I'm compassionate upon myself because I, I know what, this happened to me. This is a thing, but I don't have to live in that headspace. Yes. I don't have to live there. And so when we start dealing with treatment, we got, first of all, take your medicines. Yes. Do what you're supposed to do according to the doctor. Don't think because I feel good today, I felt good yesterday, and I didn't take my medicine, that mm -hmm. you're going to be good. That's yes, not sir. how that works. Because if I read it correctly, it says that you have to take your medicine as prescribed and stay virally suppressed. Virally suppressed. That happens by taking your meds doing what you're instructed by the doctor. But as a body of Christ, the way we treat people is through the spirit of love. If you don't love the people, if you're not able to love them through, then you don't need to deal with them. Love will always be our answer. And being able to look at somebody and have compassion, I believe that is the call of the church. It could have been you. What would, what would happen if God didn't save us when he did? He, you it could have been me in that thing, standing in the need of help. How do we treat people the same way you would want to be treated? With love, with meekness. I get ready to close us out with this scripture, John three sixteen. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I want to, I want to, let me throw this in there. Jesus was the manifestation of the compassion of God. Yes. 
what God seen in the world was there is something that they cannot get rid of on their own. So let me send the Savior. Let me send my compassion in the form of Jesus the Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, yes. but will have everlasting life. The whole purpose and goal of this is to establish the love of Christ Jesus. He is the, the manifested compassion of God. So if we're going to be like him, and we're going to deal with this effectively, we got to love like him. So what does that love look like? As you said earlier, I don't treat you like a disease. I don't treat you like a plague. I treat you like a person. But it's also giving. Uh-oh. You know, sometimes we don't like that word. We don't like that it doesn't also. It doesn't always mean giving up of substance. Of substance. Yeah. But sometimes my giving to you is simply me, me just being able to love on you. Yes. Me being able to hug you and to treat you with respect and to treat you like the person that you are. Yes. You are not the disease. You are not the condition. You deal with it, but that's not who you are. I deal with you through love, giving of myself, giving of empathy, sympathy, giving of information, giving up, giving of the treatments and, and information like this. This is how we love people. This is how we do it. And before you end it out, like we said in the last video, we promise through the word of God that he says he'll never leave nor forsake. One of the best forms of treatment is realizing that you're not going through this thing by yourself. God is faithful, he's just, and he loves us. And the reason why I treat you with love is because he first loved me. Amen, amen with that. So pray us out, Brother Justin. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your sons and daughters who are watching this uh, by streaming, God. I thank you, God, for their life. I thank you for what you've done with them. Now, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will encompass them with your love. Let your love so shine through them, God. In the name of Jesus, God, let the body of Christ learn how to love people even through HIV. Yes, God. We give you thanks and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You be blessed in Jesus' name.